Boom! We are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Nolan Hawkeye Anthony YouTube channel. And I thank all of you for being here, wherever you may be. And of course, however you may be listening. So I'm going to utilize this afternoon as kind of a double whammy podcast or episode uh, on my channel. We're going to be discussing the Iowa men's basketball team. There's a particular article that I wanted to check. And I just wanted to <clears throat> talk about the state of Iowa men's basketball, especially when considering programs like North Carolina, who North Carolina State, who isn't necessarily a scrub program, but they're certainly not on the level of like a Duke or a North Carolina or a Kansas or a Gonzaga or a, dare I say, Michigan State. How I would kind of rank it is you have programs like a Duke, North Carolina, that are like the creme de la creme. They are up there both in how fans view them, players view them, culture views them, and they're on the court production. Then you have programs who haven't necessarily had the longevity of success or even if it's not per se longevity, the the short period of success has not been as prominent or as, as amazing as some of these other programs. And, and the programs that I am referring to would be like a Purdue, a Gonzaga, I'd probably put there, Michigan State, I'd probably put there. So North Carolina State, I would... Honestly, I would kind of I would categorize them similar to Iowa. Overall, if you look at the entirety of their program, I would say they've probably been slightly more successful than Iowa. But if you look from I want to say 1980, maybe 1990 onward, they're they're fairly similar and they both kind of have their their moments Clemson definitely, especially over the last 10 years, 10, 15 years, is not where Iowa is at. They, I would say that they're a, a, a rung below, and they made the Elite Eight. So I kind of just want to, with the premise that th if those two programs can make an Elite Eight and or Final Four, can't Iowa or why can't Iowa make a Sweet 16? Is it fair to expect that? <clears throat> you know, the other day I was looking, or yesterday I was looking at Clemson and their head coach has been there approximately the same length as Fran McCaffrey. And I looked at kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of the two programs. And Iowa definitely has been, Fran McCaffrey has been more successful than Clemson. But at the end of the day, that head coach and Clemson has an Elite Eight appearance. And that's big time. That counts for a lot. In some people's eyes, one Elite Eight appearance is the same as Three making it to the NCAA tournament three times and not making it to the second weekend in any one of those three appearances. You know, you may have won one game, but you lose one. In other words, you did not make it to the Sweet 16 onward. So three appearances of, of bowing out before the Sweet 16 or anything better than that is about the same as one Elite Eight appearance or greater. So we're going to be taking a look at that. By the way, guys, <clears throat> we're also going to, this. Is, like I said, this is a double whammy episode. I wanted to throw on that ish for today in celebration of the Iowa women's basketball team. I know a lot of you guys are heartbroken. I definitely wanted them to win. It would have been awesome for the state of Iowa. 
It would have been awesome for Caitlin Clark. But they lost. And there is still a ton to be proud of when it comes to Lisa Bluter, the Iowa women's basketball program, Caitlin Clark, so on and so on. And without further ado, let's get in to this. By the way, guys, if you're not subscribed, smash that subscribe button. Support your boy. At the very least, like, comment. Any engagement, commenting, liking, disliking drastically helps the video. As I always say, I try and comment to every single comment. Definitely, if it's a respectful comment that uh, is... is intellectually honest and uh piques my interest and in, and in something that i have considered myself or want to consider more deeply i will engage it heavily but for the most part regardless i i uh engage with everything like i said i wanted to throw that ish on today i gotta admit i think i'm looking pretty fly so <clears throat> Iowa women's basketball team lost to South Carolina today. As I said at the onset, of course, it is brutal that they lost. I, I totally understand that. I'm going to go ahead and get the box score pulled up here. The, the thing <clears throat> to me that makes this even more brutal is the fact that that they were there. They just had one more game to win. But of course, that's the toughest game to win. The final game. That, that is the toughest. And the other aspect is, is the fact that Caitlin Clark has already decided that she will forego the... <clears throat> One more, the uh, I think extra year of eligibility she has the the COOF year or COVID year as some people uh, call it. And you know my my immediate thought after was like, man, if she, what what if what if she decided to come back? What if she said no, no, I have to win a national championship. We I I am so close. I need to feel what it is like to win a national championship. What if she did that? Now, I'm not saying I've heard any rumors or anything of the sort. This is my own mind at work here. This is not based on any evidence or anything like that. But wouldn't that be cool, you know? But <clears throat> definitely no hate uh, either if she really does follow through with her decision to play in the WNBA. Um. <clears throat> They were so close. And <clears throat> a while back, one of the videos I made on the Iowa women's basketball team, I said that Caitlin Clark absolutely is to Iowa what Tim Tebow is to Florida. Uh, Caitlin Clark is to women's basketball as Tim Tebow is to football uh, as a whole. As... Um, let me think of, of some other major uh, Lou Alcindor for UCLA or, or, or the other big fella. Uh, uh, gosh, what's his name? The Bill Walton for UCLA. Reggie Bush for USC. I mean, I mean, you could even make the case, honestly, that she's more than any of those guys in, in her own way. And what she has done for this Iowa women's basketball team is incredible. We've already seen it pay dividends on the recruiting trail. Iowa landed a five-star guard uh, out of the state of California. Now, obviously, they still have to get her signature, but as things stand, they have her commitment. So, and on top of that, throughout Caitlin Clark's career at Iowa, she definitely has improved the consistency of recruiting for Lisa Bluter's program. Consistently landing top 100 four-star caliber players. 
Not only that, but Caitlin Clark has taken Iowa close to the, uh, at the very least, approaching a UConn in how the average person views Iowa women's basketball. Because, you know, in my, in my, in, in a previous video, I said that is a measure of the impact of a player, you know, you, and, and just in general, as an Iowa fan, I would love to see Iowa basketball get to the place of a UConn where the average person, when they think of uh, uh, women's college basketball, they definitely think of UConn. Uh, now I know of late, there's been some other programs like South Carolina and LSU and, and, you know, Tennessee has been decent every now and again that has intermingled in there. But definitely over the last 15 years, UConn has been up there. The question for Lisa Bluter and this Iowa women's basketball program is, can they sustain it? Can they take an even greater step? And instead of just landing one every four years, a Caitlin Clark type or one every 20 years, because let's be honest, I mean, Caitlin Clark really was like a one every 20 year. And this is, I'm saying before we even knew what she became at Iowa, I'm saying from the high school ranks, okay, in, in a vacuum, just looking at her uh, coming out of high school, you know, that was like a one in every 20 year anomaly where she was from the state of Iowa. Uh, she's an Iowa girl, Iowa homegrown, and Iowa was just by the thinnest of margins able to keep her home. And even more so, just to tell you how the thin of a margin it was, Iowa was able to keep her home. If you guys remember, Iowa had their uh, Megan Gustafson, and they had their, uh, it was either Sweet Eight or I think it was Elite Eight run. And it was a, it was a huge opportunity for Lisa Bluter to use that as a sales pitch to land Caitlin Clark. If it, as so far as saying, if we can do this with these players, think what we could do with you, you know, and, and it's no shade to the players that made it to the lead eight. They're great. But if, if we can do this with players that we've had to develop and, and really mentor and shape and build, Think what we could do with you and you're our, you're already as good, if not better than they are. And they're in college. So they were obviously able to use that. So <clears throat> the next step for Iowa is taking it to the next level. And just my, as far as consistency goes on the recruiting trail, consistently, uh, landing top 100 players, uh, especially in the Midwest, locking down some of the top female athletes in the Midwest and getting them to go to Iowa. Now, <clears throat> I think one potential drawback that Iowa may have is sometimes really good players are hesitant to follow another really good player because they want to build their own path and leave their own legacy. I, If you guys remember, <clears throat> there was that four-star power forward, Jackson Kohler, out of the state of California, who really considered <clears throat> attending Iowa. Uh, and this was right after Luca Garza had graduated. And instead, he chose Michigan State. And his reasoning for it was that he did not want to follow in the footsteps of Luca Garza. He didn't want to be uh, compared to Luca Garza. But the bottom line is, if you are a legit player, you want that smoke. You, you want to say, you know what? That person was great. But even still, I am going to build my own path and my own legacy. And, we, and, and we're here, you heard? We, we still in this. I want that smoke. We're going to do this. So just 
on this game, and I'll show the box score again momentarily, but here's the bottom line, folks. Even though Iowa has been able to recruit better than they have in the past, they still have not been able to recruit on the same level as a UConn, as a South Carolina, as a LSU, as a, uh, you know, some of these blue blood programs. And that's the thing is Iowa really is approaching blue blood status in the Iowa women's basketball game. And had they won this national championship, it really would have cemented them on that trajectory. Now, making it to the national championship is still really, really good. But being able to say that you're a national championship champion adds even that much more uh, prestige next to your name. So <clears throat> I, I say that to say, even though it hurts, guys, you should not feel too sad because at the end of the day, Iowa, for the most part, was Caitlin Clark. And Caitlin Clark was able to will Iowa to heights that they had never seen before on her back. That is how good she is. And that is what makes her so special. Yes, they were able to recruit better than they have, but make no mistake, this Iowa team was not the same I it was not the same as the Yukons or uh or the Tennessees that won national championships back in the day and had multiple players on the same roster that were good enough to play in the WNBA. That was not this Iowa women's basketball team. Okay. Outside of Caitlin Clark, Iowa may be lucky this current roster to have one, maybe two play. I mean, it's hard to say because every single player is is at different stages in their development. And it's impossible to say right now if a player who's a freshman or a sophomore, if they're going to be good enough to make it to the WNBA down the line. But hypothetically speaking, I think it's fair to say that Iowa will be lucky from this current roster that Caitlin Clark was a part of outside of Caitlin Clark to have, they would be lucky to have two other WNBA caliber players. Okay. And I say that to say that you look at some of the past national champions and things like that. They had multiple girls on the team that were WNBA caliber players. Okay. Multiple five-star multiple uh, like Kentucky in men's basketball, like a Duke in men's basketball. And Caitlin Clark willed them to success. That doesn't mean that the other players weren't excellent role players and, and good in their own regard, but it's one thing to be a solid role player on the shoulders of Caitlin Clark, and it's another to have a team full of superstars. And so I, I'm only saying this to say, that yes, it hurts. I would have loved to see, obvi obviously, I would have loved to have seen Iowa win this national championship, but it was a tough feat, guys. It, it was a really tough feat. And, you know, be honest with yourselves. Did, did any of you guys, even a month ago, most of you guys see this Iowa team making it to the national championship? I think most people kind of, how even though Iowa was a one seed, I think... You know, it. I don't think it was necessarily a guarantee that they were going to make the Final Four. I don't think it was a guarantee that they were going to make the national championship. So they still, in my opinion, outperformed what the expectations were, especially given the the focus and the attention Caitlin Clark got on a night in night out basis and the hard fought. Uh, action that they got from teams because they knew Iowa was one of the most watched games and most hyped up games that they would have in their entire careers. They also played LSU. They played UConn. I mean, Iowa, what they still did was very impressive. It abs and they, they have nothing to hold their heads down about at all. And I am saying in defense, they are not, as a team, 
they do not have the same talent level that we have seen from other past NCAA champions. That doesn't mean that they didn't have a chance to win because they most assuredly did. They were winning. They were leading in the first quarter. They let it slip away. But at the end of the day, South Carolina had more athletes. They had uh, more size and it was very difficult for Iowa to guard them during stretches of this game. Well, let's take a look at the box score. So you guys, you guys get what I'm saying. You know, there's nothing for them to hold their hats down about. Caitlin Clark had a 30 piece, eight, eight boards, five assists in 40 minutes. She played every single minute, right? I think she played every single minute. Hannah Stolke, she'll be a nice piece moving on. 11 points in 27 minutes. Uh, Kate Martin, 16 points, five boards. Sydney Affelter, the, the person who's come in for, uh, for one of the injured players for Iowa. Uh, I highlighted her last time. Let me see if I can pull it up. Injured Iowa. Yeah, I, I had looked this up last time. Molly Davis. She she was never quite able to get healthy. So it, it was still very impressive, guys, what Iowa was able to do. Um, you know, South Carolina was just more balanced. You know, look at look at they got 19 from one of the girls on the bench. Uh, they, they had two, they nearly had, they almost had three players on the bench have double figures. Okay. Uh, one had six, one had nine and one had 19. That's, that's excellent bench production. You know, Iowa was very much a top heavy starting five type team. So they have absolutely nothing to hang their hats on. Uh, they they shot only 39% compared to South Carolina shooting nearly 50%. And they got out-rebounded 51 to 29, okay? Again, South Carolina was just, they, they, they were just too much, okay? And South Carolina was more akin to, to a UConn when they had Brianna Stewart and players like that, then and as far as an entire unit goes, and having multiple strong contributors compared to Iowa. So my final thought on this is moving forward, the goal should be to elevate this program to blue blood blood status, and how you do that because Iowa is very close. They've had a sweet 16 appearance. Let, let's take a look. Matter of fact, let's just let's just get nasty with this and let's take a look and stop effing around. Let's type in Lisa Bluter. <laughs> She's from Appleton, Wisconsin. So <clears throat> Dang, she's been at Iowa for a minute, bro. I mean, make no mistake. I mean, Iowa definitely is one of the one of the top tier uh, basketball programs on uh, in women's basketball. So, in the past, since since uh, since twenty fourteen, Iowa has made the Sweet Sixteen, the Elite Eight. The, the Sweet 16 again, so they made the Sweet 16 twice. Hold on, hold on. So since 2014, Iowa has made the Sweet 16 twice. They have finished as a runner-up in the NCAA tournament twice. And they have made an elite eight. Okay, they are as close to blue blood as it gets. I mean, they re they really truly are. Okay, let me say that again. Since 2014, they have made the NCAA Sweet 16 twice. 
the Elite Eight. And they have been NCAA tournament runner-ups twice. Okay, that is stupid impressive. They were able to get vengeance on LSU, but unfortunately were unable to defeat South Carolina. South Carolina was able to get vengeance on them, on Iowa. It's just how it works sometimes. My final thoughts are Iowa is this close to being blue blood status. They're very, very close. Uh, I would say they need one, maybe two more sweet 16 within the next four years. Uh, sweet 16 or above performances. You know, winning a national championship pretty much immediately puts you in blue blood category. Uh, I would, I, I wish Caitlin Clark came back for another year. It would be awesome. I, I can you guys imagine if she did said, you know what? Enough is enough. I have to win a national championship. I am coming back. That's it. That would be awesome. I don't want to put, uh, get your guys hopes up, but they're close. They need to, they need to recruit more consistently top 50 caliber uh, girls and they will be there. Uh, they, they are already one of the top, if not the top program in the Big Ten. They are this close from being a perennial top 10, top five program in the entire country. They are this close. So hats off to them. The 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 importance of Caitlin Clark is 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 uh, just gargantuan at times, immeasurable. It's. Uh, unquantifiable she is awesome and in my previous video when i was comparing lsu and caitlin clark really what puts caitlin clark over the top is she plays the game of basketball with a ton of passion but she's very sweet and she's very humble she's fun and people like her you know, now she definitely has her haters. Don't get me wrong. And that's a whole different discussion. But, uh, you know, so sorry, Iowa fans that Iowa lost. It definitely is a bummer. But this Iowa women's basketball team is absolutely heading in the right direction. All right. The last thing that I want to discuss is this story that I read the other day. I believe it was from Rob Ho. And I think it has, I think it has a lot of truth to it. Uh, the, I remember I read a while back and I have been discussing this for a while that here, hold on one second. I was good with entry level that, you know, the athletic did an article on the Iowa men's basketball team that there's apathy that is that is building up from the fan base towards Iowa men's basketball. But I think that this article provides a, another fascinating insight into some other elements that, that go into the men's basketball side of things, okay? And as you guys well know, I am not here to be a propagandist. I'm not here to make friends with athletes. I'm here to give you guys as much information as possible and give you guys my full unadulterated based off as uh, off of as much facts as possible or as much information as possible. That is what I'm here for, okay? That is what I am interested in doing. I'm not here, I'm not interested in you know, doing every single show where it's, well, Iowa lost, you know, they had bad defense and no, 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 we're getting down and dirty. We're looking at the programs. We are measuring it up. That's, that's what we're about. All right. <clears throat> this is from Rob Ho. And the article reads, and I'll link it in the description too. 
Hawk Hawkeye hoops needs more help. A lot of changes have occurred since 1998. They include my waistline. Ouch. Dang, Rob Ho. Shoot. Bigger or smaller, bro? Uh, and hair color. And not for... Oh, shoot. And not for the better. <laughs> I digress. The Iowa men's basketball program has changed during the last quarter century. It just hasn't changed near enough. It was evident again during Thursday's 90 to 78 Big Ten tournament loss to Ohio State. So this was this was written on March 14th, so a couple of weeks ago. The vibe around the program feels a lot like it did back then. There's apathy affecting attendance numbers. When that happens, the first finger is pointed at the head coach. That happened Thursday night on social media. An unquantifiable portion of the fan base called for Fran McCaffrey's removal. Some of the passe uh, didn't know any better, blaming one person and missing history. The sentiment led to this sentiment led to Dr. Tom Davis's dismissal back in 98. It was said, it was said change was needed to take the program to the next level, in quotation marks. Essentially, current disgruntled Hawkeye followers are repeating the refrain. From 98, consistently good is nice, but it's not enough. So, so let me address this right now, guys. So let's talk about that. Consistently good is nice, but it's not enough. So personally, as you guys well know, I have said that I am giving Fran four more years, and that included this last year. So he's got three more to for me to make a more accurate judgment on whether they need to move on or whether they should keep them. Now, bear in mind that some of this may just work itself out because people forget Fran McCaffrey is, is pretty old. I mean, he's approaching his seventies, if, if not already being in his seventies. Now we have seen plenty of coaches who, essentially coach until they, they gone, they dead. Uh, but, and who knows, that's what, who, that might be what Fran wants to do. Um, but I don't think so. Fran does not strike me as a guy that would do that. Uh, you never know, but personally he does not seem like he would do that. I personally really like the, current coaching staff that Fran McCaffrey has. I do think that Iowa misses Kirk Spur, uh, Spuru or Spura. Um, Iowa did lose one of their assistant coaches to uh, Cal Berkeley. Uh, I think it was Andrew Francis or uh, Coach Francis. Let me, let me see if I can find. Let's take a look. But the current makeup, I, I, I like. I like Matt Gaitens being back on the Andrew Francis. So it looks like he's at Florida go Florida Gulf Coast. That's where he is now. He might even be a head coach. He's an assistant coach. <clears throat> I like the coaching staff that Fran McCaffrey currently has. Matt Gatons, I think, is a is a is a potentially excellent down the line replacement for Fran McCaffrey as the head coach. Kind of like John Shire at Duke. Kind of like uh, Herbert Davis at North Carolina. I can I can definitely potentially see that. However, with all of that said, the bottom line is that results do have to matter. And I would say that what Rob Ho is saying is correct if this was 
five years ago or six years ago. And, and Iowa had only just recently returned to the NCAA tournament. But we're past that. We are several years into Fran McCaffrey making the NCAA tournament. And so therefore, he has used up the grace of not performing as well as they should should perform. Meaning, if Fran, if Iowa had just returned back to the NCAA tournament, uh, you know, after year one of being in, in the NCAA tournament, okay, they lost. It was the first year. Okay, uh, then year two, they make it back, and ah, uh, man, they they lost again in the first weekend. Shoot, but it's still early. Three, four, five, six. No, 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 no. That's okay. My last bit of grace is gone. Okay. He has cemented his program. He has implemented everything he wants to implement for it to be the program that he needs it to be, at least on the court. Now we need to see some results. And by the way, mind you, nobody is asking. It's the same as Iowa football. Nobody is asking for Fran, for Fran McCaffrey to take Iowa to a Final Four. I think all anybody wants is a Sweet 16 performance. And let's be honest. Not only has Fran McCaffrey not made it to the first weekend, but... Because there used to be a time when I would argue to people that, well, in fairness to Fran McCaffrey, they lost to some really good teams. You know, they lost to Gonzaga. They lost to Oregon. And I would always say they lost to some really good teams. And so it's somewhat justifiable that they lost. They just came up against somebody who was was superior and it was a bad matchup. And it is what it is a lot of teams would lose to them. I used to say that, but let's be honest, the last two years, Iowa has been bounced in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Both of those games were winnable games. Not only that, but one of them, they lost to a severely, severely down the echelon of the NCAA tournament seating, Richmond, in the first round, it was one of the upsets of the first weekend. Do you guys remember that? And had Iowa won that game, they would have played Providence, which would which was also a much much winnable game. It probably would have been their most favorable second round matchup in Fran McCaffrey's entire NCAA tournament run at Iowa. Let me show you guys. So. Uh. You take all of this into consideration, okay? And people are getting antsy because, and so essentially what I'm saying is that what Rob Ho is arguing would be more stomachable if, if this was year one of making the NCAA tournament, year two, hell, even year three. Of making the NCAA tournament. Fran McCaffrey is 64 years old, by the way. But this is, this guy has been at Iowa for longer than 10 years now. And he has had multiple NCAA tournament appearances. So the grace that Iowa fans would have for him is used up. It's gone. And not only that, but Fran McCaffrey has definitely allowed some upsets. Look at this, guys. So uh, 2021, so you guys look at the record, okay, outside of his first two years. And hell, e even if you used year two, okay, Fran McCaffrey has been a damn good regular season coach at Iowa, okay? 18 and 17, 25 and 13, 20 and 13, 22 and 12. He's pretty much a guaranteed 20 win a season coach at the Power 5 level. 20 and 13, 22 and 12, 22 and 11, 19 and 15. 
this 19 and 15 team in 16, 17 was very much similar to the 19 and 15 team in 2023, 2024, except the talent level on this 2023, 2024 team was definitely better. Therefore making this an underperforming season. 14 and 19, that was a down year, but Iowa regained quote unquote, a commitment to the defensive side of the ball, which we did see at times for sure. But then they reverted back to the mean, which is not real being a uh, below top uh, past or whatever it's called below 100 top uh, or uh, defensive efficiency team in the entire country. Anything past top 100 is average to below average, which is what Iowa has in Fran McCaffrey's latter years consistently been. Uh, 14, 19, 23 and 12, they had a rebound. 20 and 11, 22 and 9, 26 and 10, 19 and 14, 19 and 15. Never mind you, on top of that, let's look at their Big Ten finishes. Okay. Outside of his first two years, sixth, sixth, tied for third, tied for third, tied for fifth, tied for 11th. Okay. That was an outlier. Sixth, this is more the norm. Sixth, Tied for fifth, third, tied for fourth, tied for fifth, tied for sixth. Okay. That is more the norm. But I do want to show you guys their loss to Richmond. Here, you guys remember. After they had won the Big Ten tournament, which was awesome that they won the Big Ten tournament, but then they turn around and they have one of the worst upsets in the entire NCAA tournament. And then Richmond goes on to play Providence, which would have been a much winnable game for Iowa, but we'll never know. So the point is, guys, is that the grace has been worn out okay that is the point so while i do have some understanding for rob ho's argument at the end of the day the understanding that he's talking about is more akin to fran mccaffrey at the beginning of his time at iowa not towards the end where we have given him that grace. We have given him that understanding. We have said, okay, that's fine. You didn't you didn't make it to the second weekend in year one. Okay, year two. Okay, year three. Ah, all right. Now it's all gone. People want, it's human nature. People want more. They want more. And conceivably, Fran McCaffrey, his program would get better, not worse. You know, and and it's kind of like Iowa football. The thing, and this is really the root of it, is for football people see how good the defense is, and they yearn for just an average offense because they they know how good of a program they would be if their offense was just average. For Iowa basketball, it's the diff- It's the opposite. If their defense was just top one hundred in defensive efficiency, they would be a perennial top twenty five team in the entire country easy now where rob may have a point is what we're going to read here next maybe a coaching change would bring satisfaction we don't know we do know the odds of it happening aren't great the person replacing mccaffrey will be facing similar obstacles to what he had what he and Davis encountered. Iowa basketball lacks support from its athletic department. Let me read that again. Iowa basketball lacks support from its athletic department. So, and fan base when compared to the competition. So that's fair. Uh, And I don't, and this is for a couple of reasons. One, Iowa is unique in that and I, I experienced this as somebody who did not live in Iowa, but would visit Iowa. Basketball is 
unlike other states, is not the most beloved sport. I would say football and wrestling are the most beloved sports. Definitely, when you compare it to other states, there is much more support for that kind of alternate sport outside of basketball and football than other states when it comes to sports at large. So Iowa basketball is already battling that competition there, but there still are people who enjoy Iowa basketball a lot. But the fan experience, you know, it, it's it's the fan experience. It's also the fact that although I can almost guarantee the Iowa men's basketball team, by and large, in general, okay, you could, I'm sure you could find one off situations or one off examples of this not being the case. But by and large, in general, Iowa men's basketball is probably the second biggest moneymaker for the Iowa athletics department for all the sports they, they have, football being numero uno. But the difference is, is that it's not so substantial to uh, basically justify the funds that goes towards it when compared, especially with the adoration that the Iowa wrestling program also receives when compared to the football program. So that money goes to other programs especially other women's programs. So let's keep reading. <clears throat> very, very interesting. And I don't think uh, the average Iowa fan is aware of this per se. Um, labeling Carver Hawkeye Arena as dated is being kind. Little has changed for the average fan experience since Davis walked the sideline. For many folks, it's a hike to the bathrooms and concessions with long lines upon arrival. Accessibility is challenging with only one public ele elevator. What? See, I've never been to an Iowa men's basketball game, so I, I can't say. If, if one of you guys want to pay for it, <laughs> let me know. I'll definitely uh, probably take you up on it. The call for moving the student section stretches back to the 90s, at least. It took way too long to build a practice facility, and the investment paled in comparison to the new wrestling facility or the indoor football facility. The NIL contributions for men's basketball lag behind the competition. Inside its own department, other programs, and the athletic department as a whole vie for limited amount of doll hairs. This ain't Michigan or Ohio State, don't you know? There's only so much green to go around, which isn't a new concept. And men's basketball sits further down the Hawkeye hierarchy of importance than at most other Big Ten schools. That's likely not changing anytime soon. You know, if I had to rank it, so how it goes in, if I had to guess as far as how much money it earns, by and large, like I said, I would say football is one, men's basketball is two, wrestling is three, women's basketball is four. I would say by and large, that's probably the case when it comes to revenue for each particular sport with for the athletic department, contributing to the athletic department. But as far as, what most fans like the most, I'd probably say football one, wrestling slightly ahead at two, with Iowa men's basketball three, Iowa women's basketball four, but definitely a pro Iowa women's, women's basketball is definitely uh, approaching Iowa men's basketball. But I don't think long term unless Iowa wins women's basketball is able to, as I talked about in the first segment, unless they are able to sustain this sort of dominance and unless they are able to be become a blue blood and be a staple within the top 15 in the country, 
I think they will likely stay at four. <clears throat> McCaffrey and Iowa football coach Kirk Ferentz are fairly equal when it comes to on-field success rate. It's generally not viewed that way around here, but numbers tell a story. Let's begin the comparison by chopping off the first two years of their respective tenures. Even though basketball was in worse shape, they both inherited programs in serious need of health. We'll also eliminate the COVID year, which cost both programs postseason appearances. By the way, uh, both of them would have had postseason appearances. The difference is basketball is much harder to make the postseason than football because football, the postseason is not seen as just the uh, college football playoff, but it's also seen as the bowl, uh, the bowl games. <laughs> but Iowa would have made the NCAA tournament in that COVID year that was canceled. After removing those three seasons, Fer Ference has guided the Hawkeyes to an impressive 21 bowl games in 23 years. It's been one of the most consistent programs in the country during that time. Iowa reached the NCAA tournament seven times in the 10 years under Fran McCaffrey that we didn't eliminate. That's 70% compared to Ference's 91.3. The problem with stopping there is that it's not an even comparison. March Madness includes 68 of 362 D1 programs or 18.8% of teams. There are 130 FBS football teams with 86 or 66.2% of them reaching bulls, as I just said. Uh, Hawkeye basketball has finished in the upper division of the Big Ten regular season standings in 11 of the last 12 seasons. Only Michigan State pulled it off every year during that time. Iowa's four-year run of NCAA attorneys likely came to an end with Thursday's loss, but that's still... Uh, that still represents the second longest streak in school history. It's competed in seven of the last nine tourneys. That's awesome. Uh, it really is. And I, it, in my defense, I have said that. I have said that it is an imp it's a very impressive feat that Fran McCaffrey has essentially turned Iowa into a perennial NCAA tournament caliber team. Michigan State has reached the last 25 NCAA tournaments. Michigan and Purdue have made it in eight of the last nine. Iowa and Ohio State are next at seven of nine. <clears throat> Hawkeye football also is enjoying a similar run during that time in respect to conference opponents. Maybe if Ference and McCaffrey were replaced today, Iowa would win more. Don't bet on it. Um, You know, I, I don't know about that. Um, it, it, it's a 50%. I mean, I would say I would give it like a, a 30% chance. And, and I, those are good odds. Ultimately, it comes down to hiring the right person. If you find the right person, absolutely. It's possible to win more than what Fran has won, especially given where the Iowa basketball program is at now. In fairness to Fran McCaffrey, what Rob Ho is arguing is and this is the crux of his argument, is that the problem is not Fran McCaffrey. The problem is the athletic department. So no matter who the coach is, even if Iowa did hire a basketball coach that was slightly better than Fran McCaffrey, they would still, that coach would still run into the same problems as Fran McCaffrey. <laughs> We can further debate who's more successful between the coaches some other time. That's not the main point. <clears throat> They're close enough for us to know the head coach isn't the reason the program hasn't reached the Sweet 16 since Davis's last season. Yes, that's right. The last trip to the second weekend was led by a lame duck coach. Wow. That's the point. This pr predicament is not a new one for longtime Iowa men's basketball fans. <clears throat> it's eerily reminiscent of where the program sat in 98 and during different periods of time since then. You may not like it, but the commitment to men's basketball makes it a tough place to win at the highest level. We may We have a pretty darn big sample size of evidence showing it. Move the student section. If that means the media sits at the top of the uh, arena, so be it. 
he spelt it wrong. Aaron. <laughs> if that means the media sits at the top of the Aaron, so be it. <clears throat> Put vendors in the stands, add restrooms, get creative with promotions. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Let's not <clears throat> compare the men's and women's basketball programs. The latter is settling out or the latter is selling out because a generational talent makes it the best it's ever been and must see entertainment. It's awesome. It's also not easily replicated. So how do the Hawkeyes catch up with modern times in men's hoop? Well, fans play a big part these days. The Swarm NIL Collective earmarks donations of at least $1,000 a shot or $100 a month. Jamison Battle has been one of Ohio State's top players this season. He netted 23 second-half points Thursday in his hometown of Minneapolis. Where would, where would the Buckeyes have been without him? Maybe we would know had NIL not intervened. He averaged 15. What is that? I don't understand. Maybe we would know had NIL not intervened. He averaged 15 points a game during the last two seasons at Minnesota. Oh, I see. Before entering the transfer portal and resurfacing in Columbus. Hopefully, new Iowa athletic director Beth Goetz or Gates is a student of her men's basketball program's history. Then she'll see that the path to reaching greater heights starts with a bigger investment in it. Yeah, listen, guys, I think that all of that is fair. I do, um, <clears throat> you know, but the thing is, is that at the end of the day, while all of that may be fair, it doesn't change the fact. A and in defense of Fran McCaffrey, he, as is usually the case, he is a victim of his own success. But, and I say that in fairness too, but... It doesn't change the fact, everything Rob Ho just said doesn't change the fact that we are 10 plus seasons into Fran McCaffrey's career, that he has had the talent to, to do so. Like I said, even though he's a victim of his own success and he has developed some, some nice talent at Iowa, bottom line is he has had the talent to do so, but his scheme is not has not been where it needs to be to achieve that sort of success. And that is the, the piece that most fans are critical of. Would it be nice if Iowa was able to recruit more high-end talent more consistently? Sure. But if you just look at the last recruiting, the, the last couple of recruiting cycles that Iowa has had, you know, you look at the freshman class, very, very nice. One of the best freshman classes in the entire country that Iowa had this year. Peyton Sanford was developed nicely. Uh, Josh Dix has been developed nicely. While they weren't all four-star guys, they were nice pickups, nice developmental gets. So the talent has been there. Again, albeit a victim of his own success, it's the scheme. That is what Iowa fans are are coming to feel apathetic about because what it is beginning to feel like is no matter what, no matter how much early season success Iowa has, no matter if they reach being ranked fourth in the entire country or third in the entire country and have a player like Luca Garza, have a player like Chris Murray, have a player like Keegan Murray, it doesn't matter because at the end of the year, their defense is going to be in shambles and they won't be able to win that pivotal game. If you have been watching the NCAA tournament, as I'm sure much of you have, what makes the winners and the losers in the NCAA tournament? Well, I'll tell you. Number one is shot makers. And this is in no particular order. Number one, shot makers. Okay. Now, this is not the NBA, so you're not going to have as many shot makers, but still having shot makers is nice. That's why Purdue is in the NCAA tournament, because whether it's a jump shot or a two-foot bunny, they have people who can put the, bu the, 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 the ball in the bucket. Okay. Wet. Number two, 
is often having a good point guard or or good backcourt in general that can lead your team to success and through the ebbs and flows of the NCAA tournament and the uh, emotions that come with it, the emotions that come with it. And number three is defense because when you're in the NCAA tournament and you're that far into the season where teams have a, a, a large sample size of tape on you, they will find your tendencies. They will find your go-tos on the offensive side of the ball. And oftentimes you're playing against a team that is nearly as talented, nearly as athletic, and nearly as big physically as you are. Plus, they have had an entire season to look at your game tape. So while it is nice to have shot makers, as Iowa usually does, they end up coming up against an opponent that is equal, if not better at times than the, than they are in the major statistical ca- or major aspects that make a successful run in the NCAA tournament. And the other team is able to stop Iowa's best aspect, which is their offense. And Iowa conversely is not able to stop their offense. So Iowa runs into a team that can, that can defend them and stop them from making shots because offense doesn't always travel. And then Iowa conversely is when, when crunch time comes and Iowa's defense is called upon to get stops, they aren't able to do so. I've said for the past couple of years now that at the end of the day, and this is where the apathy comes from, Iowa will run up against an opponent that is virtually the same as them, talent-wise, size-wise. The difference is they won't be able to get the stops necessary because during the season, they were not consistent enough on the defensive side of the ball to show up in a pivotal moment to get those stops. See, at the end of the year, you are a summation of all of the moments in your season. And if during the regular season, you did not consistently have more often than not success on that side of the ball and get the stops when you needed to get them, it is a high highly improbable situation that you will all of a sudden be able to do so when the NCAA tournament rolls around. And that is what happens when Iowa plays a team like Auburn, when they, you know, it it doesn't, it doesn't even matter if it's a a high major program or a mid major program, they play against a team that is talented is just as talented, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more as big as them physically, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. But the difference is, the key difference is, that team gets stops against Iowa, takes away their best skill, and on the other side, Iowa is not able to get stops consistently enough to take them over the hump. And so that's the big thing. All of that does not, everything Rob Ho said does not take away what that fact is. So we will see, like I said, ultimately, I'm giving Fran three more years. Uh, and if after those three years, I have not seen what I want to see. And yes, I, I am leaning towards at minimum needing one NCAA uh, and uh, sweet 16 appearance. If I don't see what I need to see, I will be on the side of it is time to find a new coach. All right, guys, send your comments, uh, drop your comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, about Caitlin Clark, Iowa uh, women's basketball, and Fran McCaffrey and the Iowa men's basketball team. Next, I really, uh, this is the off season for recruiting. There's going to be some major recruiting news. I will have you guys covered every single step of the way there. If you guys want to send a donation into the channel, you guys absolutely can. Uh, I appreciate any piece of support, whether it's a donation, a, uh, you subscribing to the channel, liking the video, whatever the case may be, I really do appreciate it. And last but not least, DBAP, don't be a pussy without facts or feelings because your feelings just don't matter. Love you guys. See you guys next time. Go Hawks. Bye-bye.